how has computation, and now more recently, uh, the prevalence of AI, changed the field of biology as you've been working in it? Mm -hmm. So when I started working in biology in 1993, which was when I started graduate school, um, I was very interested in how the methods and mindset of physics could be used to help understand problems in biology. In that sense, not unlike the story we said earlier about um, Ketley and social physics, right? It was a time of uh, uh, vigorous engagement of biological physics, right? So there was a lot of biological physics in, when I was in graduate school in the mid-90s. In the early 90s, I would say biologists found that sort of work maybe entertaining as long as it didn't get in the way of real biology as it was understood. Um, and by the end of my PhD, a transformative thing had happened when people started sequencing freely living organisms. So 1995 was the sequencing of Haemophilus influenzae, the first freely living organism to have its whole genome sequenced. And right away, people who could pay attention to where the puck was going to go knew that that meant if you could sequence Haemophilus, then you could sequence Drosophila, C. elegans, and eventually rice and mice and chickens and humans. And once you can sequence humans, then you can sequence multiple humans. And then you can figure out statistically genotype-phenotype relationships. So by the time I finished my PhD, the attitude among real biologists about data had completely flipped. And biologists were publishing papers like, we really need to collaborate with people who know how to make sense of data. That said, it's totally unclear what modeling and making sense of data would mean. It was really a statistically driven problem with effective models, and we would now say machine learning methods for making sense of it. That transformation is, has always been in my mind working with people in industry. So talking to people in industry about the way they have some problem and they understand how readers behave or users in general, and then suddenly they have an abundance of data and try to now reinvestigate that question from a statistical perspective. I can't help but think about the lessons learned in the 90s as biology went through the pain of becoming a data-driven field. So that's what really led me into computational biology, was reading these papers about how biologists try to make sense of data, and frankly, not being able to tell what was wheat and what was chaff. Like, I would read these papers, and I just could not make heads or tails of what are the methods and whether I should believe these mm -hmm. papers. And eventually, I felt like the only way to really know what was good and what was bad was to get in the ring and to try to start using these methods and answering biological questions. So over the last 20 years, my research has been uh, less so biopolymers, which is where I really started, and moving into applications of machine learning and biology, biological sequence data, biological image data, biological network data, and working closely with real live biologists to try to think through how do I reframe questions that are of interest to them as machine learning tasks, execute the machine learning, and then give them some interpretable understanding of their problem armed with the output of that machine learning. 